These properties aren't lookers, I understand that. They are really ugly, I understand that. But that's what opportunity is. You know, a lot of time, good opportunity doesn't look very good. Welcome to a new episode of Leveraging Real Estate for Freedom. Today, we are talking about one of our assets that is currently in escrow and set to be sold. This property is a single family home. We purchased it as a package deal with the triplex next door. If this property was presented to me as an investment opportunity all by itself, I probably would not have purchased it just because I really don't like single family homes as investments. I feel that they're very poor investments. And so generally, I don't touch them. All right, let's dive into the numbers. Property is currently in escrow for $305,000. This deal is being wrapped up as we speak. We purchased it for $196,000. Acquisition closing cost was $9,978. Construction cost us about $23,000. And there were holding costs of $10,674 as a stance. There was no rental income, so the holding cost was debt service plus expenses. In addition to that, there were $4,000 of fees. This was a private sale, so we did not incur any broker cost or agent fees in magnitude of five to 6% sales price. Net on this property will be $61,348. Total cash in, turnkey cost, all right? This is how much money we spent that we put into this project is $63,252. This includes the down payment, this includes the holding costs. Now, fees paid. With an acquisition closing cost of $9,978, construction cost of $23,000, capital expenditure of $63,252. This is our total cash in. This is our capital expenditure. Net income on this deal is set to be $61,000. Our ROI is 96.99%. This metric is calculated by taking the net of 61348 and divided by total money spent, which is 63252. And we derived 96.99%. Everybody know what is happening right now. Interest rate is at 6.5 to 7% for your average 30 year borrower. And this is insane compared to the two to 3% we saw not too long ago. And it affects our downward pressure on price because single family homes do not have support for valuation like multifamily does, right? Multifamily is held up by rents and single family just don't have support and is largely driven by market conditions. As you guys can see here, if market goes down, price goes down. If the market goes up, price goes up. And for this particular property, if the market did not go down, if the interest rate didn't raise to 6.5 to 7%, we would have sold this property for $320,000 easily instead of 305,000. So now I wanna share with you guys the market adjustment and the amount of money that we didn't make were the difference. If the market didn't go down and we sold this property for $320,000, you subtract the purchase price of $196,000, you subtract the you know, $9,978 of acquisition closing costs, you subtract the $20,000 of construction costs, you subtract the $10,674 of holding costs, subtract $4,000 of fees, our net is $79,348. And our total capital expenditure is 63,252. Our ROI would have been 125.45% versus our expected ROI actual of 96.99. So that's 28.46% less due to market adjustment. You have to take into account, we purchased this property as a package deal with the property next door, which is a triplex. Even though we made really good money on this property, because of how the market can impact single family homes, I still might not have touched it. Uh, that's just me. After everything said and done, this is a good project. It worked out for us, even with market adjustments, we still made very good returns for this particular project. There were also extended period of time that this project was held up due to permitting issues, but even with that accounted for, we still made a killing on this project. There were a couple lessons to be taken from this. All expected delays due to permitting, right? That was a big one. I think it held us up for, I don't know, two, three, four months, something like that. 
market changes from the time that we purchased this asset to the time that it was ready to be sold due to the delays, due to market fluctuations, we lost, you know, more than 25% ROI. We lost about $18,000 from the expected returns. And just know that in real estate, rarely does everything go right. It's more likely that something unexpected will always happen. To be a very good real estate investor, prepare for these unexpected delays and unexpected scenarios. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys got something from this. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode.